You've generated a ton of code with AI, making a lot of incremental changes along the way. But now your code base looks like a tangled mess. How do we solve that? Is more AI the answer? Of course, yes. In this video, we'll dive into workflows to leverage AI to help you review and improve the AI-generated code alongside of the code that you've written yourself. Yes, for the crazy people who still write code these days, myself included, this workflow will ensure that you always have a highly maintainable code base free from major factors and performance issue. Want to learn how? Let's dive in. There are three ways to do this in Cursor. You might have your own preference. I'll show you my top pick at the end of the video. You can use the built-in review feature, use the composer, or use the cursor chat for this. I'll show you all of them so you can decide which one is best for your own workflow. Here, we'll continue working on the podcast transcript editing tool that I've been building over the past couple of weekends. The first way of doing it, using the cursor's built-in review tool. First of all, you'll want to enable the review setting. If you haven't already, you want to go into cursor settings, go into beta, and then there's AI review feature down here. You want to click enable that. Once you've done that, you'll see when you click open the sidebar, there's a new reviews tab alongside of chat. It allows you to set a custom set of instructions on the things that the review should look for. Cursor released this way before Composer early this year, but I don't think they've been working on that feature. But the UX is certainly interesting, which is why I've included this in the video. Below the custom review instructions, you'll see these three review options. Review working state, so this is all of the current changed files that you haven't yet committed. Review diff from main branch, so if you have the workflow of working off a feature branch, this will take everything that's different from your current main branch and use that to do the review. There's also the review last commit, so if you already committed your latest feature in the commit, then that's good. Personally, I prefer to use the review diff from main branch because I like to make a lot of micro commits as AI implements features for me so that I have a bigger component to review altogether rather than reviewing tiny bits of work at a time. So that most of the time, the working state and review last commit, the context is way too small for the review to actually be meaningful. If you're interested to learn how to best leverage Git to help you with all of this AI enabled workflow, comment below. I'll be more than happy to make a separate video for that, but we won't dive into too much details here. You can run this Git command git diff dash dash stat main, and then the stat will make sure it shows you the number of changes for each one of the files. You can see that there's a lot of changes that went on since I branched off main. So now let's proceed with the review. Depending on the size of your change, the review time can vary. One of the annoying thing with the current review setting is it doesn't allow you to really pick a model, nor does it allow you to use all of the cursor's convenient functionalities for the at mentions, whether it's the at notepad, at docs, at web search, at codebase context, none of that is available here. Now that the re review is done, you can see that the cursor outlines the different problems at different severities. There's critical, high, low, and trivial. For this critical one, it's saying, oh, there's missing user authentication check in our transcript list. A really good pickout. And once you click on the issue, it will open an inline chat that you can directly type the problem for it. And then here we can say, please fix. And then it will generate the code to improve on the problem that he has just suggested. You can see here, oh, it's known to get server session, return a div that says you need to sign in, and then the rest of the code stays the same. So what we will need to do is take this, copy it out, <laughs> nowhere near as convenient as just having the apply button, isn't it? Once you've done that, the code is changed, do the relevant tests that you need to, and then you can save here, then you can click on resolve. So the issue goes away. Cursor has provided a quite nice UI for dealing with this review, as well as giving you very clear indications of how important the problems are. If we go back to the previous review instruction screen, here, I've just given it a super simple set of instructions to say, review the code as if you are a senior engineer, look for issues and think about long-term maintenance, right? You can also put in more detailed instructions, but the only annoying thing is this thing gets cleared when cursor restarts. There's no easy way to mention files. So it's better to keep a long text document somewhere that you can copy and paste the instructions in. But all in all, the review user experience is actually quite nice. After you've done fixing each one of the issues, go into Git, commit your code, then you can merge it back into main. If you're working in the team and this still requires other engineers reviews, 
push this branch up for further reviews. Now that you've had AI do a session of reviews for its own generated code plus yours, you'll have a high confidence that your code review should go through without any huge problems. So that's one of the ways. We'll dive into the cursor composer way of doing this code review. Let's bring up the composer interface. If we type in add diff, it shows you two options to pick in the context it will shove in directly through Git. There's the diff of working states, as previously explained. There's also the diff with main branch. To maintain the same test, we'll do diff with main branch. We'll use the exact same set of instructions as we did together with the reviews. Press enter. Okay, that took a grand total of about a whole minute to run that whole generation. And we can see that it made a ton of improvements directly in the code. If we go through the chat rationale, scroll to the top, reviewing, updating the page TSX, fixing some import issues, adding the data access layer, talking about some of the observations, considering adding more styling, you want to add more information for each transcript and so on. Okay, a lot of changes. We won't go through each one of them one by one, the key takeaway here is that when it's making so many changes at the same time, it's hard for you to know if something does end up breaking. Your debugging session is likely going to be complex. As we've seen from previous videos is that the smaller the chunk of work you break things up into, the more likely AI is going to create working code out of the first shot. And we can already see there's a, a, already a lot of red lines, so not working quite as expected. If you were to choose the Composer workflow, I'd suggest that you start with a small commit. Don't do it when you have worked on a ton of features because that improvement is likely to go wrong and create more pain in debugging than the code quality improves. We can improve on this output quality by creating a notepad with more detailed instructions on how it should be doing the code reviews. Here, I've written a code review prompt with the help of Claude and you can see that outlines the code review process in far more detail, where it talks about the exact things they should look into, whether it's code structure, performance of opt security vulnerability, and a whole bunch of other things, plus so the rules it needs to follow, as well as how it should be outputting the content. The one thing I really liked about the cursor review UX is that it shows the different changes with different severity so that you can scroll through and decide whether you care about it that you want to fix or you just want to resolve and leave it there. We can recreate that workflow by using a more sophisticated prompt like this so that it outlines in the output how you can apply each one of the changes. Of course, I can directly run this through the composer to let it make that changes again. But the reason I prefer not to use the composer because composer's application of changes is default on, whereas if you go via the AI chat, it's default off. So you optionally choose to apply each one of the changes as needed. And then so you can go into a similar workflow like the cursor review UX. Now we'll dive into the AI chat inside of a cursor, leverage this notepad with the sophisticated review prompt to do our code reviews. Now that we've written it, we can close this. Let's create a new chat, mention the notepad, code review, then mention also the diff from main branch. Chat is actually quite nice. It shows you the changes pulled in where you can scroll through the whole thing. That's it. Don't need to type any command. Enter. Wait for the magic to happen. You can see here that it first of all provides an overall description of the changes that happened throughout those commits and directly talks about the things it needs to fix. There's a performance optimization issue where the whole thing gets re-rendered, something that the cursor review didn't catch. And because if we go through these changes, cursor knows the file that diff is referencing to. You can click on the file and then if you like the change, simply click on apply, right? And then that makes it super easy to just apply the change. If you wanted to further iterate on the change and chat with AI on this, you can reference the problem, say like for one, do something here, right? Then type whatever follow-up instruction that you might want to use here. If we continue to scroll through the change, it wants to update the error handling during the update. Let's go in, click on apply, see what it looks like. Here, it will actually try to pass out the error data from the JSON first <laughs> before just erroring out if in case there's no error present. Much nicer than before, right? So there's security enhancement in deletion. It called the issue that I didn't actually verify the user ownership before deletion. 
So it's correctly added that change for me. Let's click on apply here and authorize. It finds the ID transcripts, make sure the user session matches, does the change. Man, this looks great. If we continue scrolling through the change, accessibility in dialog components, accessibility usable by all users. Well, that's very kind of it to know to do this. There's also type safety concerns. Using chat to do this code review is a quite pleasant process. Compared to Composer, you can optionally choose to apply each one of the changes as needed rather than reversing the changes that you wanted. So obviously here, we can further optimize our prompt in our notepad to outline the severity and perhaps further asking it to re-rank the issues based on the severity of the change. Once we, uh, you've accepted and are happy with all of the change, as always, we're going to get take the change, committed, then done. Your code is ready for human manual review, or if you're working by yourself, directly merge. Now you can see that Curse actually provided a whole lot of ways to allow us to better leverage AI to test out its own generated code to help us improve code quality. But again, these are the kind of workflows that's just very well hidden by Cursor. I don't know why they don't even publish a whole bunch of these workflows and requires a lot of us to discover for ourselves. These workflows are so powerful that it makes it super easy for you to create high quality applications while reaping all of the benefits of the AI efficiencies. If you've enjoyed this video, you should check out my other Cursor videos just up there. Until then, happy shipping, and I'll see you in the next one.